So feel free to go as off topic. Yeah. As you want. Yeah. On, along the way. Uh, Israel. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is Israel? Is this something that Rick says where he's drunk like ever? Like, like, like in what way? Like in a non beneficial way? What's up guys, welcome to episode 13 of the podcast, lucky 13, it's my favorite number for anyone who's wondering, second favorite number is 27 for anyone who's wondering about that as well, don't know why, but those are my favorite numbers, um, we're doing the cursed post long run episode, we try not to do film this podcast after long runs because like the energy levels are just so low, <laughs> and Today was a pretty tough one. Yeah, so this tell, me about your long, tell, tell me about your long run today. Bro, I got fucked We're gonna up. Do up <laughs> I got fucked up today. I'm just like currently in the pain cave. Uh, you, if you watch on my YouTube channel, I have a video coming out soon of me doing like a workout where I just get destroyed and my legs just feel terrible. I'm in like that phase of training where like I'm pretty scared every day that I'm going to get injured and I just feel terrible and I really don't like it. And so I just like <laughs> trudged. I trudged through 17 miles today and it was not very fun. We got through it. Yeah. Got through it. You you can't see performance. You guys did pretty good. <clears throat> did Alicia take you to the spirit world? <laughs> <laughs> Alicia messed me up. We were like, my like my kind of goal, like Dathan said, run whatever pace you want. But the goal kind of was to run with Alicia today. And we have like three miles to go. We're on the downhill. And on the downhill, like obviously you can run faster, but my legs felt like especially bad on the downhill. I was like, Alicia, just leave me behind. And then, <laughs> and then she just dropped Save yourself. So Save, you. Save she, yourself, bro. And then she put like a minute on me in the next three yeah. miles. But yeah, so we'll uh, we'll try to raise the energy. Uh, luckily, we have some beautiful coffee today sent in from Mr. Samuel Bloodworth. If the name on here is correct, that's a pretty fucking awesome last name. It's a pretty name. sick name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you should read that. Bloodworth? If that's that's like a name you read, like, like <laughs> so you like, want an estate, you go like travel to like some estate in Lithuania. That's a or lord. That's that's a, yeah, Lord that's Bloodworth. A, that's like, a lord Bloodworth. Like, that's pretty, a pretty dope name. That's, a, that's an evil character. Definitely name. has a vampire in his Yeah, I was going to say, he's got some vampires <laughs> in his <laughs> And the beans themselves are from Little Waves Coffee Roses, which was in North Carolina. And they're very tasty, so thank you for sending those through. And then... Today, we were very lucky to have a couple more guests on, some more Wisconsin Connects. We have, firstly, Tyson Mihi. Say hello. How's it going, everybody? And then we also got Colin Burdett. Say something crazy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, that was not fresh. That was actually Sorry about he that. Froze. He froze. He <laughs> froze straight away when you said that. We're but, working into it. Yeah, yeah, we'll move into it, but... More fucking Wisconsin people. Yeah. Joy's yeah. loving it. Anytime, all our roommates hit so on. Yeah, every anytime, single. He's like, no one wants to leave flag. Medicine, and, and medicine must suck because everyone comes to. Oh, no, it's just that we no have friends. Like, we, we have friends no that actually want to come see us. No one likes you, George. Obviously, no, no one likes you guys. You guys never have friends. If you guys are friends with George and you live in Flagstaff, you should come down and visit him because he's very come sad. Visit him, come get on our podcast. It's very yeah. sad he because no one's coming down to see him, and I feel bad for him. Well, we have all these lovely people coming down. There's amazing us. people who come to see us. Yeah, so, we're just bros out here. Thank you very much for making the trip. Thank you. Yeah. So the connect Tyson and I go very far back. We were roommates for six years. <laughs> it's Fresh. over. It's a, yeah, it's over a quarter of our lives. Yeah, so far. Pretty much life partners. Mm -hmm. I think legally we'd be able to do the. Uh, what's it? De facto, I'm ready for that. De facto marriage insurance or whatever it is. benefits. Let's go. Yeah. So <laughs> six, six years, six like times. even the year after you were done. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so all five years of college, and, and so the, yeah, until the beginning of COVID, and then then that's when I moved down here. So deserted me. Pretty crazy. Uh, Tyson um, still runs. Had a lot of great performances. Uh, probably most notably recently ran at the. I mean, this is a while ago now, actually. But you yeah. ran at the marathon <laughs> trials for the Olympics mm -hmm. 2020, 20, Actually, that was so long ago now. That I think about it. It's but, going on two years. It's crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> But yeah, Tyson is a great runner, has a great story. And then Colin, we went together at Wisconsin for a year and a half. Yeah. And then you yeah. left I us. Did. yeah. Transferred. Sad. Originally from the East Coast, from New York, transferred <clears throat> to BU. Yeah. Shout out Boston University. Boston University. And then Two you weeks. went there for, you ended up doing a six, six, year, a six year at Boston. Yeah. Which nowadays is like everyone does a six year. I mean, that's yeah. common now. <laughs> yeah. 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 But back then that was still relatively unique. Yeah. I mean, we didn't have a, we didn't have any fifth years on the team. Yeah. So I was like, you're the old man. This old dude. Yeah. And then you, uh, <laughs> you're still here. Then after that, you volunteer coach yeah. the next year there. Yep. So then yeah. you really were the old man. Yep. And then we there for one year. 
Yeah, I was honestly only there for seven months or seven six months. months or and then you went to Iona. Yep. Where yeah. you're the coach now. Yep. You've been, been there for two years. Been there two years almost on the dot. So you know the BU track like inside out. I do. Yeah, no. <laughs> the inner well. okay, yeah. Yeah. Question, yeah. question. Yeah. Is, is it short? Yeah. Is it short? It's not short. People come in, measure it, they take the wheels out. Really? Yeah. It's just, uh, but I actually like when people like question it. Yeah, like I, it's just fun. Like because people then go to it. They like they want to see it. It's like yeah. I don't know. I don't believe this. So they go and see it yeah. to like get the. And and then it's cool too because like everybody that's run quick will kind of come to bat for the track, you know. <laughs> yeah. Versus the people that yeah, it's haven't. Definitely so. legit. It's, it's legit, bro. Legit. It's legit. Yeah. It's definitely it's legit. legit. I mean, George and I are now. <laughs> yeah, you guys. In that legit. Yeah, it's legit, oh, yeah. bro. Yeah, actually, <laughs> actually, I might even think it might be long. It might be. I mean, honestly, I think it's more beneficial to just run it outdoor. It actually, didn't feel good at all. good. It felt terrible. Terrible. We just. I'd probably never run there again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, so Tyson actually also coaches. Because mm-hmm. you're a volunteer coach at Wisconsin now. Yeah. Sidekick to Mick Byrne. Can't imagine how that and is. That must be a daunting Aaron task. <laughs> <laughs> daunting task. Yeah. yeah. First first rapid fire question. What's it like to be a mixed bitch? <laughs> <laughs> straight out the bat. Um, straight out the bat. I don't know. Like, I think I'm very well suited for the position because being uh, an athlete of mix for five years, I understand his mannerisms and... Uh, tactics that yeah, yeah tactics and tendencies so and with I gavin think, gordon now too it must be more intense for you i i take a little bit more of the yeah. <laughs> um having to be the uh, liaison between like the mick translator says, yeah, exactly the translator. Mick, mick, mick says something athletes say what did he mean this is really what's me. yeah this is really what's going on but so no, what he means by this is <laughs> no it's all good and i think being on the other side of it i could like probably can give Mick a little bit more shit than I used it's to true. as an athlete and call him out a little bit more. So it's that a good balance. Be, that must be fun. Yeah. And I'm saying I'm a fairly patient person. It is well, so fun so. as soon as you leave and then you can have like the real conversations with oh, the yeah. coach and like the actually have a shift. Bit. Like, mm. I don't know what it was like with Mike Smith, but as soon as we graduate, Mick's like the type of guy who's like, yeah, we can go out and drink now. Yeah. And Literally when we went, we went back for a week and he just <laughs> went out and had a drink with us and just talked mm. absolute smack, which is fun. But it is interesting to think about Mick because he's like, well, not George, unfortunately, but he's such a big part of all our lives now because for those who don't know, Mick coached at Iona for 19 years before he came to Wisconsin and came to Wisconsin. He's been there for like, what, 11, 12 years, but he kind of like built the Iona program. And so he's, he's got a bit of a thing going on there where it's almost like a Nick Saban, Alabama thing where all these people that were under Mick at Iona now are coaches at other good programs and he's got this whole like big network and you know that's probably part of the reason why you were able to get that iron job like mick yeah. probably helped out there yeah so it's just like the connect man he's had such a big impact on all of us was gavin there too gavin yeah. was also gavin there, was there. Gavin was there. Yeah, gavin. did they leave together to go to wisconsin no i think gavin no. went to he went to a bunch illinois. of illinois he, he went to uh, illinois Ole miss. and Ole miss, Ole miss and i think yeah, yeah. But the interesting thing is, like, so, like, the Stanford coach was under Mick. Yeah, Rick, coach Rick. Ricardo, yeah. Ricardo mm-hmm. yeah. Coach Rick is a great guy. Rick is yeah. called. Yeah. Rick is yeah. called. We, yeah. Coach yeah. Rick. Um, but he he's coaching Stanford now. And, it's like, it's brothers. pretty... Colin, yeah. Colin would know. You would probably know all of yeah. them. But it's just crazy. Like, that, he's the that network he's got. It's, it's a crazy... Trend. Irish mafia, man. Do people, do, people, <laughs> do people still talk about, like, Grandpa make it? I don't know. Like, <laughs> like he's a legend there, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, people still talk about him? About Mick Byrne? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there, our trainer has been there, like, was there with Sam and stuff. All right, Sam, our trainer, was there with, with Mick, and Damn. he's got stories. And, uh, <laughs> I'm sure he's got Mick stories. And, and uh, Ricardo <laughs> and, and even Joe. and uh, It's crazy. It's a, it's an awesome kind of network to be, you know, part of. And, yeah, great yeah. stories, great characters, just good that's, people. That's kind of how you know. Well, one of the signs that someone's, like, not even just a great coach, but a great person is, like, you, like it's even happened if because we would go to new york a lot and there would be people that would come and like say hello to mick and people he'd coached 20 years ago and they just all have like the utmost respect for him like mm. they just absolutely love him the, like, the funniest thing is going to those nationals or regional meets where like all those irish coaches that have been through the, like they all like <laughs> congregate in a corner near the bar and you're like yeah that's the irish mafia like they all like know each other and they all like straight go to their like irish saying so that none of the american coaches know what they're saying is, is, is mick homies with mike zazon yeah well i don't know if, he's very uh, he's homies with the providence like i've seen him in the providence and, 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 and irish marcus irish, yeah. as well at villanova he's i think all the irish guys have a connection i think how tight they are depends on how much they drink 
together, and I don't think Marcus drinks. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm not sure. Mark, Marcus and Mick. Wait, so like is he tight with Ray Flynn too? Why are there so yeah. many he, old he Irish? Very close. <laughs> Why are there so many old Irish dudes? I think Ray and <laughs> Ray, it's yeah. of the Ray and Mick are pretty close. Yeah, it's because um, it's actually like, like because in the '80s or whatever, like there just wasn't much opportunity in Ireland. So they all wanted to come over to the US and like dominate, and, uh, <laughs> become coaches, I guess. Oh, there's more potatoes <laughs> over here as well. Marry some Americans. Yeah, get that green card. But no, the Irish mafia is pretty funny. Lots of Irish people. And they all just, I, especially I think as internationals, like for the three of us, having a coach that's an international, like especially Irish, just is so nice. Because they just, it's just like a slightly different personality. They also yeah. understand well, where you're coming from, leaving yeah. home and stuff yeah. like that. So. Yeah, they get the experience. Yeah. But yeah, so like kind of like one of the main topics I wanted to talk about with these uh, beautiful guests we have here today is thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Appreciate uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like developing through like college. I guess it's like when you're like a young adult or like the end of adolescence or whatever. Wait, is adolescence end at eighteen? What's an adolescent? Is that younger? Uh, adolescence, no, like, <laughs> adolescence, like teenager. Yeah. All I know is that teens, teens, teens to like before eight. Really? <laughs> oh yeah! Shout oh, out Banks new album January fourteenth. It's called. Is it called adolescence? Adolescence January fourteenth. Pre order. I'll text him. Ask him. Yeah. This, this what, is what, a random what? aside, but there's this New Zealand artist which we all love, who's who's uh, <laughs> Geordie is friends with. His name is Bank, but it's spelled B A Y N K. Check him out. Check him out. Hopefully, Bank, we can get him on the show. Yeah, we're going to get him to perform Actually, no, on yeah, our 100th episode. You put a, one of his songs on your story. Yeah, you liked it. Yeah. Deep dive. He's, he's got some bangers. Yeah. But, yeah, kind of talking about, like, because we all, everyone changes a lot in college. Well, that's maybe a weird way of saying it. You develop or you grow a lot in college, mm -hmm. and you guys went through that, and now you're on the other side of it where you're helping people develop. And I find it really interesting how, like, the experiences that you had, you know, kind of helps you uh in the coaching world i'll go to you first colin because you've been coaching for a little bit longer and more intensely than tyson like i know i know you have like such respect for all your coaches is it like is coaching just so fulfilling because of like the effect that coaches have had on you in your life yeah i think so uh like i think it's a good way to put it because I've, I've had a lot of coaches but i hadn't had them for a long time yeah does that make any sense and uh but like even just in like the two years I've had with with each of them, it like you know meant a lot their effort, their time there. And then now coaching, I think it's more of just like the reaction of of the athletes you work with, like when they when you know when they're getting excited or they run really well, like it, it's just exciting to see them have a good experience because like the sport is extremely depressing most of the time like it's <laughs> a good way of putting it and, <laughs> results may vary and then that's the thing is like you know i you know i definitely have had my fair share like i've gone through it and i've had coaches kind of help me out and and even when i didn't even understand it and then now you know you almost want to protect you know, your student athletes from going through like reaching that dark spot and or even if they hit it multiple mm -hmm. times um so it's like but they they will have to go through it it's not that that's just a part of the sport um yeah. and uh it's so rewarding when it when it does click um, like it feels it feels so good and mm -hmm. and uh but yeah mm -hmm. yeah one thing that i remember i think this happened in your freshman year but you've told me about it is you had a stress fracture mm -hmm. and but you kind of ran through it because you were scared to yeah. tell the coaches about it and then i remember yeah. gavin was like why the hell did you do that? Yeah, he's pissed. Have you had similar experiences like that as a coach? Yeah, and and that's something I try to be really aware of because like the more you, like biggest piece of advice for any youngster, high school or, or college, um, it's like just talk to your coach, even if it sounds scary. You think they're gonna be pissed, um, just because it's way easier to manage it. But uh, like, and you can almost see it as a coach too. You're like, some some is not right here. Like something's not going on, but. I, I was so honestly scared of being at a big school and, and training with guys that are like, you know, that next level where I'm not quite there yet and scared of not making it. So, and yeah, I didn't communicate that where if I just said, Hey, my leg's kind of hurting, we could have been fine and maybe had some racing and been Danny, but yeah, I just chugged at uh, Advil and <laughs> ran 85 miles a week until well, that's, uh, Advil. Pop those pills. Yeah, yeah, that's like, <laughs> Yeah, I don't, know, I don't, I don't, don't do that. That's what. That's hashtag. That's hashtag. Not good for sports. Hashtag not good for sports. Yeah, they're like kind of like yeah. people who are pretty into like yeah taking the anti inflammatories. That just sounds like the most terrible thing ever. Yeah, I was blown away when I last time I was out here. 
you like something it was your ankle like blew yeah. up mm-hmm. and like it was literally just Tylenol or, or like ibuprofen it was yeah. like one of them and you were very against it right yeah, yeah. and like you, you called your mom I don't know I get too like whatever but you're like it was a big deal exposed. Morgan yeah. exposed yeah. Morgan exposed <laughs> you got here first people Morgan calls his mom so, but yeah and, then, and like it, it was kind of like a big deal for me so I was like oh like why this will help you kind of get there in a way but I yeah. mean I, I respect it and like that's more of like that's the better route to take. Um, yeah, so. I, I think I go too far the other way, where like sometimes an anti inflammatory can like do what it that says, where it helps with inflammation. But I hate the idea that I would ever have something that's upset and inflamed, yeah. and I take an anti inflammatory and rather than helping mm-hmm. with the thing, it just masks the the pain. The, the pain. Yeah. And so then I go do something that would make it worse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm, that's what that's what scares me. I, I, yeah, I definitely like a experience as well. Like, because I never have had dealt with injury or anything like that. And I remember in Scottsdale, I um, I kicked. I was kicking the ball with Carlos in the backyard, and I landed on my ass, and I felt like I broke my butt, <laughs> like my <like, laughs> coccyx, butt injury, and I, I couldn't run. And this like, this, I think it was the first workout I've missed like like ever in running because I I'd never ha- had. Couldn't that run issue. is is putting it quite strongly. Me and Joe did a workout, and Ollie ran like 15 miles as hard as he could. Yeah, I should have done that. Instead, what, instead of working out, what happened he was he literally went ten miles it on was, the track it, there was, around the outside. There was pain in my back, like in yeah. my lower back, and Ritz was like, "You're not working out." Oh, so you just and I copped a hissy fit, took ibuprofen, and didn't eat. And <laughs> what happened was, I, I've never fast. taken ibuprofen before. I didn't know about it, and Joe's like, "Just take this. It's to like numb the pain." <laughs> Just take this. Just take this. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good policy. And then I, I took the ibuprofen and I had never experienced before. Didn't eat. I went to the run. I felt really strange. And I told Ritz about it. And he's like, yeah, you're definitely not working out. Like, yeah. you're, you're masking the pain right now. Yeah. So then I just ran around the track, like, pretty fast, pretty angry. And then after that, <laughs> I felt so bad, so terrible. Like, I hated myself. Not just, like, my body. Like, my body felt Bro, bad I and I hated myself. Yeah. It was like, yeah. I think you had something else going on apart from the ibuprofen. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if yeah. that was all just the it's ibuprofen the causing space. that. What, what else is going on? I don't know. I'm not well, those, those aren't the There's symptoms not... of ibuprofen. <laughs> I just hated myself. But <laughs> not a symptom of no, ibuprofen. No, no, but my, my body felt again. bad. But I hated yeah. myself because I didn't yeah, listen to, to Ritz. Like I didn't, like I didn't listen. I didn't trust him. And I also did, had no experience with that. And I obviously had teammates who had experience. And I felt like I was back in college in freshman year, not learning from like mistakes like that. But that was an experience I had with that. And yeah, now I'm like turned you off it. Like I, I won't take. I wouldn't even put Voltaren on my leg. Yeah. Wait, like, do you ever take that type of stuff, George? We, we have like a cream that we rub. That sounds kind of sus. <laughs> <laughs> we so have some sort of cream. It's just a secret cream. It's a cream. But it's like a, it's like a what's that stuff called? Like I the Icy that? Hot type yeah. cream. So that's mm. not really anything real. Mm, yeah. That's just a sensation. What's the, is it PR lotion? There's definitely a time and a place uh, for Voltaren. Yeah. Like in... There's That's no what she reason Ollie shouldn't be using it occasionally right now. That's what she said. Instead of just complaining about his ankle. <laughs> that's, what, that's what she said. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was going to keep saying it until it, it becomes relevant. Yeah, no, 100%. I spent years running with the Advil, like, during races and stuff. I mean, I basically wasn't healthy for, like, was that for you? five so years you at a right? time. So yeah. how, much, how, much, how many pills were you popping? Very few. Okay, like so med- you were just medical. using it very like tactically. Because <clears throat> yeah. I know some people. Some people would do it like daily. No, yeah. I would just like yeah. oh, that use terrible. it to like get through some races. Like yeah. maybe 2018 cross probably couldn't. I probably wouldn't have been able to race like a single time that season without it. Really? Damn. Damn. I mean, I was just yeah. Far out, Brussels sprout. That's Fair income, mate. Fair <laughs> income. Uh, yeah. So, God, I feel dumb about mentioning that butt story now. <laughs> After Jordy, hey, it happens. Happens to the best of them. <sighs> happens to the best of them. But coffee club official verdict: Advil mostly not good. Yeah, mostly not try. Hashtag not good for sport. Try not to mask the pain. Embrace yeah, the yeah. pain. Embrace yeah. the pain. <laughs> Just lean into it. <laughs> Safely manage. Safely manage and talk to <laughs> talk to your coach. Talk to your coach. Yeah, and medical professionals. Yeah. Um, one more question for Colin. Sorry, Tyson. It's all good. Do you ever have a situation where you feel like you're torn between, you feel like you can see a kid fucking up and about to like make a mistake and you're like, oh, I could say something here or I could just let him do it because maybe that's what he needs to learn. Yeah, I think like week in and week out, that's, that's, like, that's, that's like, like a theme. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like, yeah. But and, that, and that's it. It's like, and you're not, you know, it's nothing against the kid, but it's almost like, because if you keep on going at it, right, like, 
it's hand, gonna be like, hand, like the kid's just like why is this guy on me why is he yeah. and like, like let me live my life kind of thing and then yeah. he makes a mistake and like oh shit I should yeah. listen and sometimes you gotta just like let, let him crash and burn for yeah. a le- learning lesson as long as there's no like you know obviously if there's gonna be like some serious harm or like to the body you're just gonna yeah yeah, yeah I gotta have the conversation so, so. but yeah sorry I don't I can lean forward to you but um, but yeah it's and that, that's kind of that balance of like sometimes like damn I really should have said something or like I or I should have been able to see it and then I didn't see it and um, and then other times like you feel good because maybe you saved something you yeah know? but uh, yeah and then you, sometimes it's just luck so sometimes just do you guys like from obviously going from running to coaching have you guys like created that sense has it been taught or learnt or have you already like kind of just had it like just a sense of coaching like like knowing what's going on. See, like seeing like reading people and, and like all i can say there's a lot of aspects and i think yeah. there, i think there's like probably a neat portion of that yeah. that you kind of develop even when you're an athlete i think you get that sense from maybe teammates and yeah. stuff and then i mean being on the other side of it is just more applying that skill and just kind of you know knowing when and how to approach people and then that ultimately comes down to you know knowing the person yeah and yeah. you know what fits them best as far as addressing, you know, whatever that would be. Yeah, it is also interesting depending on your role because, for example, you, Tyson, Mm -hmm. when you're a volunteer coach, you don't want to overstep your boundaries either because Mm -hmm. it's like, makes the coach, you're there to assist him. And like, sometimes you just got to probably be quiet. Like, yeah, yeah. And then that's, it's also kind of a weird experience because there's still people on the team that, you know, we ran with, yeah. like it would be, did the you delete freshman. everyone off your Snapchat? <laughs> um, <laughs> legally? Yes. It's not like I'm, you know, talking with college kids all the time. No, I'm just so, saying, yeah. So there, there, there's, yeah, there's that ethical and moral, like, nope. so weird, we had Maverick yeah. Darling, shout out Maverick Darling. Who, oh, yeah. I also had a big impact on our <laughs> yeah. lives. If you don't know him, he yeah. ran in Wisconsin, amazing runner. Ran Is that the dude who's on like, the greatest workout Wednesday of all time with Nick Willis in play. Yes, he yeah. is actually. He's also the That's guy who won nationals with his balls out of his shorts. Yeah, you won one nationals. But you, 2011. We, yeah. yeah. The, team, won? the team. Oh. The team. They, so the Wait, story, really? Yeah, so the story behind that is they did an NAU. Where they got, <laughs> we spiraled down to that. <laughs> we had to go to that. When we mentioned Mav. Not to, not to tell any too many personal details about Mav, but his balls were out of his shorts. <laughs> but so classic NAU where the day before... The race actually they were sponsored by the same brand that sponsors NAU, so maybe it's a them thing. Not going to name them. Don't sponsor us. But they got new kits <laughs> the day before the meet, and they he didn't try on his shorts, and I guess the shorts the lining was like way bigger, and so apparently this is the, this is the story has been relayed to us is that he was good enough to be like top ten that day, but I think he came like I think he was probably he, all American. He was outside like, the. There's four All Americans, okay. and so then he was, he was like the 40 fifth one out. Or yeah. 50 or something. Yeah. And apparently, the reason is because he spent half the race like <laughs> just holding his balls back inside <laughs> his line. And, and if you look, look, if you look it up on the internet, like the pictures are out there. Just saying, just saying. But uh, he's gonna be pissed. Yeah, he's gonna be well, pissed. Because people are gonna be looking it up. He's not gonna yeah. find out about this. Uh, no, no one tell him that we told you that. It's, yeah. it's just our little secret. But <laughs> anyway, we brought him up because he came back and ran as a pro at Wisconsin. For, our sophomore year. For Ciccone. Yeah, when he was running for them. It was like two years, wasn't it? Well, one year he was still running. One year he was more a coaching yeah, role. Yeah, yeah. So okay. mm-hmm. when he went from his more running to his coaching role, we were all like friends on Snapchat and then he deleted all of us on Snapchat. <laughs> That's right, yeah. coaching. Mm-hmm. We were all devastated. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. But it is very different for you because mm-hmm. you were literally on the team with Owen for five, four years. Five years? Four years. Four. Yeah, four yeah. years. And now you're like coaching him. So mm-hmm. you're just like, did you, drive, did you drive the vans and shit? Do I drive the vans now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> big van driver. Big van driver. Big van driver. Um, have you had any debacles happen as you coached there? Apart from the time that Ollie and I were there and a golf cart fell on top of me. Oh, I, well, I wasn't there <laughs> I would that. never that. was that. not my fault. <laughs> that was, because I remember like we heard it and I was like, oh no, something terrible has happened because I was screaming. Like, who was this screaming? Someone screamed Charlie, like, no! Charlie Wheeler? He was, he was no. acting, no! Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you just see him in the car, in the driver's seat and these guys are hanging on to it like zombies trying to attack him and he just, the car just goes down. Yeah, when we uh, visited, they did a, at the cross-country course at Wisconsin, the coaches drive golf carts around 
and we were there and some of the kids were messing around after the workout. You and I were both driving it too, like yeah. in the workout. A different, a different golf cart, but then, yeah, it tipped over and it fell on top of me. Oh, no. He was in it. And, and this, is, this is how you can tell Mick's character. Happen. He looked at Char- Charlie, who was probably the one that caused it and said, are you okay? Yeah. But it landed on his leg and he was like hobbling <laughs> away. Yeah. yeah. It's such a big thing. Shout out. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty wild. I was pretty concerned. But, I was like, oh, damn, this is what happened to the program? <laughs> <Yeah. we left." laughs> this got wild. This thing got really wild. <laughs> yeah, I once got caught driving one of the team vans by our compliance oh, guy no. one time. Oh, man. And I had to, like, donate money to, like, a charity. Like to, a like, bribe? Cover. <laughs> <laughs> I do. It was, the it was yeah, literally market. a bribe. Wait, how but does that work? I don't, I, but it was, like, just for the mileage or something. It was, like, uh, less than a oh, dollar. Oh, yeah. Wow. Like, I, like a thing. Yeah. Yeah. I donated like 90 cents to like <laughs> so, you, so it was a 90 cents bribe to keep the compliance away from you it was so it. weird dude that's dude, weird I, I would love to be at the, uh, the charity and like see the donation <laughs> come in and be like what the hell <laughs> <Yeah>. who the <laughs> fuck <laughs> donated 90 cents it's like an insult so, uh, <laughs> I think it was like the boys and girls club of Damn. like stuff or something yeah 90 yeah, cents was, was really pretty good use. Awesome. pretty, pretty char- charitable of you there George but uh so Tyson mhm you you would be so we spent a lot of time you you would probably be winning an award for like most changed in college oh hundred percent <laughs> yeah i would you, give myself that title for you, sure you were like mm-hmm. you were like this is a weird actually this is kind of a nap like a good analogy you like were like what's the one before a butterfly caterpillar and then the, the best way to describe it is the caterpillar coming into college went to a cocoon and then turned into a butterfly after college, is he a butterfly really, now? I think I think he was a butterfly like the last year of college. Last year of so. college, yeah. But like you were, yeah. You you, you uh, really like developed a lot. In Park Park West was your cocoon. PT Dub. <laughs> yeah. PT Dub was my cocoon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was the name of our apartment complex. So I would say, in terms of like, if you think about coaching more, less on like the pure running side, but in terms of like helping people grow mm-hmm. as people, you have a wealth of experience there. Uh, yeah what was it well i guess we should fill in a bit i'm sure people would love to hear about our experiences as through the years i feel like freshman year you kind of hated so me did you hate me freshman year that was wasn't that See, shaved no. head tossing that was yeah that was shaved head uh, i remember seeing you and i was like damn this guy's intimidating and then you were super nice like oh cool yeah <laughs> I didn't. I didn't hate you, Morgan. You, you may have gotten on my nerves, but it was all like. <laughs> uh, is this, is this the futon thing? No, let's not talk about that. Yeah, but like, there's, but there's, there's, there's just like a, a, there's a long laundry list of items. Yeah, that but I could mention. That was one. That was on the list, wasn't it? Should, well, yes. It was. That's all you have to say is yes. It was like there's like a few things that you're like, God damn it. I don't know. As roommates in in, in sh- a dorm, should we go over the gun story? Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. well, we <laughs> just say the gun story. It makes it sound yeah. really bad, huh? But that's <laughs> fine. No, so uh, Morgan's first week in America was like it was before the season yeah, had yeah, actually started. Yeah, you were staying at, yeah. staying with Alex Hat in Madison, True. and you were gonna come to my place. And for those of you who don't know, I live on a farm, uh, hour outside Madison mm-hmm. in the southwest corners. So uh, Morgan was gonna have his first legit farm experience yeah i'm like a coming. city boy yeah i haven't like shoveled cow just poop. a city boy <laughs> yeah. born hey. and raised in i don't Rainwick. know what i'm doing <laughs> <laughs> yeah like, i'm i'm like dude i'm useless yeah so well, well, let's, mm. let's let's hear the story okay. then, then, then not, then okay. right. so um oh, yeah so you came down for two weeks and we were just training together but then um my older sister was moving out to san diego so my parents were helping her move out so it was just me my older brother kent and you the at the farm just hanging chilling out just doing farm and <clears throat> another thing is that well obviously like australia has very strict gun laws this is you. to no gun you? laws and being in the middle of nowhere like family has just like hunting rifles we're not in uh, assault rifle family. <laughs> don't. don't that. <laughs> just, to, just, let's, to let's make this clear. Let's just make this clear. Farm, clear. Yeah. Farm, yeah. So, um, so earlier that time, we went to one of my friends' house that I ran the high school with because he had a gun collection of like. Old it was an assault. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but but you were so you just wanted to shoot guns so much so we went and guns. did that and then fast Which, forward a little fun. bit. It was fun. We did that. It was fun. That was fun. It was really good. But then, was so Morgan it was just us bad? three, huh? Was Morgan pretty bad at shooting? I thought he was pretty good. Thank yeah. you. For picking up a gun for the first time. <laughs> it's not that hard, just point. 
point, point shoot. Point I, I played a lot of Call of Duty. So exactly. Was pretty yeah. <laughs> so then fast forward a little bit of time. It was us three alone at home, and Morgan wanted to go shooting. So Kent hunts. I don't. So you know, he's just like, okay, yeah, like we can do this. So we set our stuff up, and uh, we're just sitting on a picnic table just to get a nice uh, base, I guess. And Morgan's got our uh, 22, and it's got the scope on it as well. Big and scope. Kent, and <laughs> Kent and I are both looking at him, and he's got it, and it's not really tight against his shoulder. <laughs> so we're both like, hey, Morgan, like you need to you know, brace that against your shoulder a little bit more, otherwise it's going to recoil. And then famous last words, Morgan goes, don't worry, I got this. <laughs> 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 and so... Morgan shoots and then immediately like drops the gun and he turns around and there's just the blood <laughs> running down his forehead. We're yeah. just like, oh no. And I was so, just like was seeing it? stars. Yeah. I was seeing mm -hmm. stars. It was like, yeah. I don't know if I was concussed, but like, I, I don't see stars. Was it the scope? Well, the, yeah. yeah, well, it was the scope. So the scope hit him in the forehead, <laughs> <laughs> split his forehead open. So, and then did you, did you have him. like a bandage on it for like ages? Yeah, like, you, Joe you, left the, well, you left it on the scar. I still have a scar. Well, Cause I was, cause it was summertime. And I didn't really want it to scar, cause like right on my forehead. So I put a bandage mm -hmm. on it for a long time. Yeah. And then when we were like, just meeting, <laughs> yeah. yeah, we were just meeting you guys, like, cause uh, and we were. All, I remember being on the sidewalk. I don't know who told us, but they were like, yeah, like this guy Morgan from Australia. But he was out of the farm with, with Tyson, isn't he? shot himself in the head. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Like, it's crazy. And then he came in and he had, like, this, like, huge thing. We're like, oh, shit. And then it turns Whoa. out it was this I felt really bad because probably, like, the worst thing that happened is your parents got really angry at you. They got really mad at us. Well, mainly because... I would say mainly because you called your dad, and your dad's a plastic surgeon, and you're just like... He's not a plastic surgeon. He's a dermatologist. 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 Shout out. Sorry. Shout out Morgan's dad. <laughs> yeah. Shout out Morgan's dad. And the, he then, wanted me to get stitches. Yeah, and I mean, Kent and I both... Our self-assessment was put a Band-Aid on it, like, yeah. you'll be fine. Just classic farm shit. But, yeah. Yeah. Dude, but, I'll tell you what else was wild that happened uh, that summer. I was helping you guys chop wood for the winter. Oh and my god! Dad, your yeah, dad cut his finger off. Oh yeah. My <laughs> oh my god! He, yeah, uh, we had yeah. There was a lot of injuries when <laughs> yeah. you were around. Yeah. It's the farm life, I guess. But uh, the, the, was it a phase in? It was huh? pretty bad. It like it was pretty yeah, like, like oh okay. no, <laughs> no it, it you told me about it actually. actually. It was it's like the blue. the end flesh of his finger, like it got Oof. pinched between the hydraulic or whatever, and like just kind of peeled it off, and it was it was nasty. The yeah, not fun. Yeah. But that's just what, that's just what you kind of buy into. That's when I came to America and that was exactly. my, my first experiences. I was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> this is what I came for. Bring this bitch. <laughs> bit, of, bit of Wisconsin. Bit of Wisconsin. Farm boy. These colors don't run. <laughs> what is that from? So that, isn't that what they say? Americans say? Like, these colors don't run. I'm not sure what that means. It means like pride, like pride you know, patriot, patriotism. Is this true, Colin? I, I have no idea. No, these colors don't I'm, run. I'm in, but I don't, I've never heard I don't, it. I don't know. Yeah, so that was that was the stuff. Always been going to some rallies. Yeah, wait, where, where some have you been hanging out with? Specific. <laughs> Honestly, you know who he said sure. that jokingly is like Dathan, because like we joke about him like being American, like traveling a lot, and he's yeah, like he's like true. always going, yeah, these colors don't run. Yeah, it's like pretty that's like true. it's supposed to be like American patriots and like the, is the colors like, and the flags. Is it like don't tread on me? I don't really know what that is. But What's that? That's, that's like the snake flag. Yeah. yeah, I saw a shirt it's once like, with a guy, the Washington, the George Washington guy. Like biting, like, uh, biting the like the planet, like eating it, and then it says "try and stop us" with an American flag behind it. I looked at that and I was like, "Damn, this guy's gonna, <laughs> this guy's gonna make a lot of friends in Europe." <laughs> Wait, he was wearing that in Europe. He was in the airport, more like oh, he yeah. was around the airport area, like, international. So he was probably traveling to Europe because that was yeah. when I was heading to um to Belgium. He was like, "Try and stop us with it, with it." George Washington eating the planet. I was like, damn, that if, that, if, if I could take a photo of that intent to my friends in America, they're like, yeah, that's pretty much what we believe. <laughs> that's fucking damn. awesome. <laughs> what were you talking about? I don't know. Like, <laughs> him, him shooting himself. We're talking about your freshman year, kind of, your, yeah. 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 your development. Because, like, so okay. freshman still in year. Yeah. Is it still caterpillar phase? You're still yeah. a caterpillar. This is right? caterpillar phase. Because you, sure. you pre, didn't pre, really, yeah. you just like generally didn't really enjoy Madison. Or no. Well, like, this freshman year. I mean, so my high school was like a little over 200 people. And so I was coming from a very, very small, very sheltered life into Madison, which uh, for people who live in Wisconsin, it's like there's Milwaukee and there's Madison and then there's the rest of Wisconsin. Yeah. So there's a very stark contrast and like not a lot of, you know, 
time if you were driving anywhere outside Madison. So, um, yeah, my first year, like, and I was redshirting, so it was really different from, you know, racing every single weekend, like winning every single weekend to just basically like going with the philosophy for your whole years devoted to training and just working up to, you know, all of you guys that, you know, cause I was a walk on and, and everybody was like, well, it's worst, worst cross country <laughs> recruit coming in. So, um, that, yeah. And like that, that part was difficult Shout just out. mentally. <laughs> huh? I, I respect that vibe. Colin, Colin was also were yeah. you a walk on? I was a walk on. I was definitely yeah. back here, but hey, going yeah. for it. Yeah. So then so like that really sucked just like having to, you know, devote all my time to training, not getting able to like race and stuff, and then adjusting to the city life and also just adjusting to being in a lecture hall of four hundred people and trying to learn versus, you know, all my classes were ten to fifteen people. Yeah. And like um, both your parents like taught at the school, right? I guess your mom taught next door, but your dad. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I had my dad vibe. as my teacher and my coach, and, yeah, and so such a vibe. it was. Yeah, it was really, really weird and just very tough transition. I remember you and I had a. We were in history one hundred and four together. Was that we had a lecture? Yeah, I think I had mono. I yeah. disappeared for a while. Yeah, but <laughs> I've like. Did yeah, not do well now, I just like remember <laughs> you said something to me. It was like October, so we were a month in. You asked yeah. me like how I was doing. I'm just like, man, like I'm a really, really rough time. And I was really depressed, like looking back on it. And, um, but it was kind of you know trial through fire. Um, I thought about transferring, but it was like you know I wanted to be there, and like that's the whole reason that I came to Wisconsin and just you know living an hour away. That's like you know what I wanted to do. So stuck it out and then, you know, probably like in my third years where I started to get some footing, we had the one 2016 Big Tens. And that was big. That was a big moment for me. That was, passing, uh, oh, I remember because I was at the back of that race. I was a freshman and I was absolutely god awful. I was so shit. <laughs> and um, I remember Mick yelling at Tyson because like literally Tyson kind of won us that yeah. championship because he literally came through the last So we only won by two points, right? Three points. Three yeah. points. And you, how many people did you pass? Pass twelve people in the last K. Yeah. yeah. And like literally, oh, he's like, mixed guy. like yelling and going, yeah. "Run like a man possessed." And Tyson's just using his arms and just like we, going. We joke, we joke about how in the last like K of that race or the last straight that Tyson like sold his soul. To <laughs> no, but you know my my bib number was six six six. So it was it, it all came together in a perfect. Uh, thank, thank you, Sage. <laughs> But that yeah, that was, I remember that and I remember, um, like that was a pretty awesome. Cause I, I think the year before that was when, that was the, that was when we got eight. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that was the we, we don't need to revisit that. It's been no, very, we won't revisit that, but like it was a big step in the right direction That's and for you as well. And, yeah. And remember the, the outside looking like in on that, right. Cause like I, the emotion at that, like post race mm -hmm. was unreal. I was, was like, this is crazy. crazy. You had, cause Malachi and like. Yeah. Those guys were like really yeah. emotional about it. Yeah, I, think, I think almost everyone was crying. Yeah, it was, I think I was, like, was up and I was useless. That's probably the most I've ever cared about anything in my life. <laughs> <laughs> 2016 Damn. Big Ten. Yeah, probably. <laughs> no, it was very emotional. Yeah. And uh, that was awesome. yeah, but then so Tyson, for you, that was kind of like a big turning. Yeah, that was a big turning point for me as far as, you know, um, kind of feeling like I had arrived or that I really belonged there. Cause I think the first couple of years it was just like, you know, I'm, I'm here, but I'm not really getting the opportunity or like string together training to contribute. So that was kind of the beginning of it. And, um, from there just kind of, you know, progressively got a little bit better and better and like more on a personal note, it was like, you know, I was in the closet at that time. So I'm openly bisexual now. So, um, that was always going on behind the scenes, which definitely made it tough in like mentally dealing with the struggles because at that time I was like not at a place where I could, you know, really open up and just kind of exhale with that things. Um, so, you know, fast forward into 2017, um, I had mono that summer. Um, oh, I remember that. So, and that, like, we were, we were essentially running with a B team because yeah. Morgan was red shirting. And Morgan he, was gone and pretty much and no one was ready. There, there was yeah. a bunch of people got injured yeah. like late summer. Ben was injured. Owen was injured. 
You had mono, you had bat, mono, bat. Yeah. And I think Joe and I were the only ones that were, like, running yeah, through we're the helping. summer. Because mm-hmm. I needed to, like, step up because I was god-awful. Yeah. And so, you know, going back to the whole transition thing, it's like, you know, that was a big step back, like, physically and just kind of meant when, you know, the big, first half of that whole season was really, really struggling with trying to string together training and, like, consistently feeling good and then having the pressure of not doing well but being like expected to do well Mm -hmm. it's like you know yeah a lot of it a lot of it just like you know i guess kind of relating it all back like throughout this whole period is just like i've been conditioned to like try to handle that and deal with that on my own Mm -hmm. and so and again not really reach out or talk to anybody it's just like you know it was my problem and i had to deal with it um but then kind of going into the 2018 season um was able to run some pretty quick times on the track and like more consistent training it was like actually consistently healthy for really like a stretch too so that helps um but then i was also getting to that phase personally where it's like you know i can't hold on to the secret anymore like i gotta tell people so eventually like I came up to my family and that was, you know, it was hard, but it was something that I needed to do. And, um, also that summer is like when my dad got diagnosed with thyroid cancer. So, um, and moving into that, uh, next fall and then like another thing was happening, like if somebody was dating at the time, like that ended. And so there's a whole bunch of shit happening at the same stuff. time. Yeah. yeah. At the beginning get of the 2018 shit, fall. All together. So it's together. <laughs> yeah. All your shit. Get it together. <laughs> exactly. Like, How are you going to get together? But get all that shit so, together. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think like that phase for me with like, um, like what I said, just like being able to exhale and like being a little bit more open with you guys. And um, I think and also kind of realizing it was going to be my, like my last year on the team, mm. last opportunity. And like, we were going to be really good. Um, that even though like it really sucked, um, and it was a hard transition and, uh, coming out of the cocoon phase. Into, <laughs> yeah. Into the beautiful butterfly. Yeah. yeah. Um, into the beautiful butterfly. <laughs> yeah. I, that. I, yeah. I just think remember like, mm-hmm. particularly with, um, like that 2018 season like i think we started to like particularly our house oakland i think was like the best oh, setup yeah. we had we like, had a lot was, of fun out that year yeah it was the best well, i think just like, like, well, like yeah, yeah it was just like top, like top to bottom like anybody that was on that team like just, had I mean, had a spot yeah. and like contributed like maybe not so much like you know performance but perform performance wise or being able to be in the top seven to race yeah. but like everybody emotionally like contributed and like had a purpose on that team so yeah, that house i think that was yeah, one of the best good. memories i have from college mm-hmm. was 2018 that house yeah. oakland was just on fire yeah and <laughs> like, yeah and then like having that supportive environment where you know you're just with your bros you just hang out with your bros <laughs> yeah. yeah and just trying to my bros. Just trying to exactly. my bros, bro. <laughs> yeah um so yeah so then like in the 2018 like we had our season i don't need to go into all the details of that but 2019 like good graduated and you know, it's been a process since, but like yeah. just being able to have the space and opportunity to kind of figure myself out. I feel like I there's a lot of life that I'm still kind of catching up on in that aspect. Um, remember just with a, being a little bit of a late bloomer. Sorry, so. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I remember also like there was a hairstyle phase with Tyson. Oh, I think we should just cover oh. that because oh, Tyson, okay. like, it was like oh. the cocoon. You could see it developing. Hair length, yeah. Tyson, the hair he, had the, he had the buzz cut mm-hmm. freshman year and then he kind of got the, the shark fin kind of came that in was, why did you guys like not i thought it looked good i thought it looked good did you not i don't know it looked bad it, look, I, it was like, bad. it looked fun well i, mean, I thought maybe, it looked good maybe it was a maybe well it's hard to say because we were just comparing it to a shaved head you know it, it was a, it was an improvement that <laughs> yeah, way that's i thought it looked good because it was developing yeah. and then your hair kind of grew out and you, you, know, you started having you know? these lashes and, like, and now you got the long hair you know exactly. yeah well, hair length thing. hair so length you can, uh, you can see the development there with the hair yeah if you see pictures of me hair length directly correlates with uh personal growth yeah so it's just like you see <laughs> you see short hair tyson it's like man this guy's really this guy strong. this guy needs to like yeah. develop into butterfly tyson he's got the nice long hair Exactly. Dude, that's a great point. Golden Mox, you know? That's a great point. Um, and, I, and, like, I enjoyed seeing that because, like, I knew you were, like, going you, you, through. You guys, like, I'm very sure, like, even yeah. when I hadn't told you guys, you're going to be on a side at, like, 
Yeah, we, we knew and we, we were just obviously trying to like have the best environment uh-huh. possible because we knew how important it was, um, not mm-hmm. just for you, but for everyone. And it was cool yeah. to see your hairstyle develop that. And I was like, no, was like dude, when he gets the long hair, Tyson, he's going to be like completely evolved. Like, <laughs> but um, that was that was kind of the thing I noticed, which was kind of kind of cool. Yeah, the yeah. hairstyle development. That was very fun. George, yeah. did you enjoy another classic Wisconsin jerk off session? <laughs> <laughs> we just talk about all these random memories. Jordy's just thinking about how can I. Is that I Mike Smith? Out from yeah. <laughs> but uh, right. yeah. when we get Mike Smith on the show, yeah, then we can all I've reminiscing about Daisy. Um, so I, I, okay, I guess I will say to the kind of wrap up my whole rambling was that um, as far as now being on the coaching end of that, um, I think with how I interact with uh, people on the team, it's just being somebody that they can go to and kind of being that safe space for them. And in order to do that, like I have to be very authentic in my role um, to be just very approachable in that sense. And then also um, I think it's like being patient with people as well, because come of some of the things that we talked about with like injuries and stuff like that, I was also like very afraid to tell Mick or Gavin like that I was sick or that like I was feeling this mm-hmm. and you know, so much of the like coach athlete relationship is just like having a consistent dialogue and having an open dialogue about those things because, you know, you can't do it on your own. Like you need to be able to reach out to people to make those smart decisions. So I think, you know, the experiences and, you know, the life journey that I've had, like has definitely helped in being in the role of, you know, I feel like I'm fairly natural leader in those team settings. So, um, but as a coach, it's obviously a little bit more responsibility and accountability. So that's what that's I guess. Beautiful story. That. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Well, it's certified it's fresh. Certified <laughs> fresh. I mean, is that run tomatoes? <laughs> Did you see that? There's, oh, I saw a thing on Twitter. It's the first 46 reviews of uh, No Way Home is like 100%. Oh, really? Right yeah. New Spider-Man? That's getting Wait, me when does that come out? getting me excited. Thursday, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah Thursday. Oh, it'll be out the day before this pod releases. Wait, well, yeah. when, when, when are you guys seeing it? Thursday. We're seeing it like literally on like, like the day before, aren't we seeing on the 16th? 3 p.m. Yeah, 3 p.m. on the 16th. And it officially comes out. I'm going to wait until it comes out on DVD. Yeah, the day before. Well, they always say it comes out on a day and then it actually just comes out the day before. They have like pre, like, that's weird. pre sales stuff. Anyway, it's just um, a lie. What do you think? <laughs> I don't know what it is. Yeah. Spider Man or this podcast? What was that? Yeah. Spider Man or podcast, more views. I think our podcast will probably impact Spider Man's views. Yeah. Might not yeah. get the same, but we're yeah. probably going to impact the we'll opening impa- week. We'll impact it. For so people on the edge. Kind of like how Dogecoin follows Bitcoin. Just exactly yeah, like that yeah. great fair. dogecoin reference yeah. that'll us talking about dogecoin will probably make its value spike so <laughs> yeah. is this, so inside, buy, is buy this no 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 we I, need to invest in something first and then talk. is this no. insider trading if we pump it if we bought it now and then the podcast comes out and we know it's gonna make you go up and we then we sell absolutely do that it's really unethical is it but yeah that's, that's, <laughs> but that's we can, i think you can go to from jail a guy for who's like heavily invested for that okay but isn't that what elon musk you go to jail rich though <laughs> you got a nice jail. You got a, you got a nice jail. They got like golden bars. What's he say? What's he say in the Wolf of Wall Street when he's like in jail? He's like, I don't know. He, he oh. enjoys jail. He's like, because at the end he's like, yeah, but I forgot one thing that I'm rich. <laughs> <laughs> and he shows like he's playing tennis. Yeah, with his bros Damn. in jail. In jail. Yeah. So yeah. that's that story. Uh, any other coaching stuff we want to talk about? Uh, I mean, there's a whole world of it to talk about, but. Uh, <laughs> College coaching. It's, it's got, you got on a camera, you got to be, you gotta be <laughs> careful what you're <laughs> saying. Not, not saying but, the yeah. thing with college coaching, which I I would find difficult, this is like why I wouldn't, one of the reasons why I wouldn't want to do it is college coaching is like probably 50% or maybe more dealing with shit that isn't coaching. Yeah. It's probably Absolutely. more than 50%. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Like, like it's, it's very interesting, like being in the offices every day and then seeing like Mick stay today. And I would say the, and this is not a dig on Mick or anybody, like I'm sure it's the same for like most college coaches, but some of like the smallest time devoted is to like the actual, okay, what are we doing today for practice? Or like, what are we doing for training? And the rest of it is all logistics compliance, like trying to plan all that stuff. It's so ridiculous. Like, you know, Cause you think like with college coaching um, and like, I think we get a little bit more of a sense of it when you're an athlete, but I think there's this kind of narrative with college coaching. It's just like, Oh, you know, you just have to show up to training. Like it's very cushy lifestyle, but it's like, 
you have to be so devoted yeah. to what you're doing I and just have just a lifestyle. Non-stop. Yes. Yeah. 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 But I, th- mm. that's what exactly the same. Like, is what makes me so like I get like low key pissed off when I'm like staring at this computer too long. I'm like, this has literally <laughs> nothing to do with what no we're trying yeah. to do. Mm. And like every day I wake up and like I'm just like I go through the to do list and I'm like, I don't know, if, whatever. But any day I'm like, whatever they need, whatever the athletes need, like. That's my priority. Like, yeah. if I get in trouble mm-hmm. for like being late on some other stuff, like, and you guys are just checking yeah. on the water. <laughs> Let's but, get uh, the gus, the gus water, the gus water up. Let's see, how we, let's see how long he goes this time. So for for me, <laughs> we need, you'll gus, have to go back and start a timer. Yeah, like, gus Tyson. like gus like drinks water, and oh, I don't know. I like he doesn't. Do Tyson thing. He doesn't like stop. So you have to yell at Gus to stop drinking water. Otherwise, hey, what? No, let's see how long. Right, let's. Oh, he's still going. He's still going. <laughs> For this one, God thing, like three hours later. Three like, <laughs> oh, yeah. hours later. Yeah. The guys are just still sipping. He like water. forgets to drink water and then all of a sudden goes, oh, there's water here. And then just drinks it for like five minutes. Yeah, this might awesome. be some kind of record. He's, he's still going. going. Before we yeah. move away from the, the coaching topic, yep. I, I said there are a lot of good people in this sport. A lot of good people. Mm-hmm. And, like Tyson's one of those guys. Like, you know, Mick, you know, Joe, Pienta, and I, like, all, like there's a bunch of them. But there's a lot of people in coaching. And, like, mm. so there's also a lot of assholes. Yeah. And, like, mm. that's one thing, like, when you're an athlete, like, just just be careful who, you know, really make sure you talk and, and do all this stuff with, uh, and... I feel like you can get a good vibe. Because, like... Cause like yeah. That's the tough part, man, about the process, though, because, can't. like, when you got these freaking salesman coaches yeah. out there, yeah. Yeah. Oh, all yeah. they think about is recruiting, yeah. and... And then you get there, and you're like, wow, well, I'm, like, literally just yeah. thrown to the wolves a little and bit. Yeah. You, for a coach, right? Like, I think, like, you're a part of their experience. It's not about your experience. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. It, 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 like... You know, you, this is what you do, but like, you, they might forget about you. Like, you know, I mean, we are all pretty close to the coaches, but like, they're going to go on and have their own lives and do all that stuff. And it's like your job to make sure it's a good experience because, like, it's gonna, that little sliver is going to impact everything. I go, yeah, my whole TED talk on this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, See, that's yeah, gonna, that's going to be a but, tough um, thing to be in because, like, as a coach, when you get so invested in, because I've seen this happen where there's some kids who, unfortunately, no matter what you would do for them as a coach, you can't. Uh, you can't it's, say. Yeah, it's like beyond you. And that's yeah, that's, that's all hard. right. Like, yeah. You just do the best job you can do and maybe they'll figure it out when they're 40. Yeah. Maybe they never will. And yeah. So. That's another thing where I think Mick has like done it, has an amazing balance where he's like, because kind of want to mix policies, like kind of the way he sets it up, which I think helps in this regard is he always says, I can't want this more than you. And so what he's saying is he wants you mm-hmm. to take responsibility for your running career, but also your life, your school, your everything. And so he's pretty much saying, like, if you don't want to be here, like, mm-hmm. he's not going to tell you, like, you have to be here. Yeah. He would always say, like, take a long, like, look back, the mirror thing, right? I'm going to say it wrong. But, like, the person looking back at you in the mirror never lies. Like, yeah. Do you, like, we don't, you don't have to be here. Like, we still mm-hmm. be friends, but, like, yeah. you're going to ask those questions yeah. and you're looking so. at yourself in the mirror and think, yeah. like, am I, am I wanting this more than. And those, yeah. There, there are kids on a college team who, you know, like, they don't really want to be there, but they're there because it's just like maybe they were really good runners in high school, so it just made sense to go running college. And then like quitting the team would be let down a lot of people, which is really difficult yeah. to do. Or maybe mm-hmm. they're on a scholarship, but like you can tell like they don't want to be there anymore. Like they're just it's not for them. That's just tough. Yeah, well, yeah. And that's like the <laughs> tough thing with like recruiting because obviously you want to try to recruit for talent first, but ultimately, you know. And it's a you know, decision that you have to make as a coaching staff, but also like if you're a high school athlete looking to compete in college, like you have to be able to you know, see yourself in that position, like working with those coaches, like for the next five years. Cause I think like, I don't want to say this. I think people go after like the opportunities, like to be like, the best runner they can and like the best runner in the situation but obviously like then then like thinking through this stuff kind of comes afterwards and i think i like i wouldn't have changed my decision making in going to wisconsin but i think i i wish that was something like i would have self-evaluated a little bit more like got because i like i never took my official visits anywhere like i knew i wanted to come to wisconsin so when mick offered me the spots it's like yes yeah that's like i wish i'd had a little bit more uh 
guidance and just yeah. kind of like considering all the different factors or like really getting a feel for um, some certain aspects of just the college experience. Pretty tough also. to know that as a mm -hmm. high school. Yeah, the, that's also like, yeah, a tough thing to know. But in but, kind of a, a similar vein, but to move on a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, Ali Ostrander recently announced her yeah. something. Oh, yeah, I didn't read the whole Instagram caption because it was really long. I did, think did she's, just, it? she's ending her uh, relationship with Brooks Peace and she's taken some time off running. And okay. Brooks. <clears throat> and Brooks, yeah. Brooks Peace and the Brooks, yeah. So she's taken time off. Um, honestly, a lot of respect to be able to post that, you know, like it's, it's, yeah. it's a very personal thing and to be open about that with her fan base is, is something to be admired. And I imagine that this time off for her will hopefully help her and maybe put her in a better position down the road to become a better professional runner than, um, you know, she does. Yeah. So, just it's, so just she's her, pretty easy to support. Yeah. 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 She's she cool. She's great. She's super open about mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. She doesn't really, hashtag good for the sport. She hashtag good for, and that, and like very doing that is very hashtag good for the sport. Cause it I really think is. it's, mm -hmm. it's tough. I think to be able to be selfish sometimes and say, Hey, I, I need yeah. like a mental and physical break from, something that is my my been my life for so long it's there's very a lot, hard there's a lot of pressure because everyone if you're a pro runner like people <laughs> like kind of rightly so are like man you're living the dream yeah well, and what, people what, you, you, what you thought was the dream what looks yeah. like the dream at yeah. one point but it's not the dream for everyone when it becomes your reality yeah so it is really hard to like she was she, that. she made the world team in 2019 oh yeah she was 22 yeah. 22 years yeah. old so like she's that. yeah she's been at that that high level and she's yeah. experienced like, and i think for her obviously she knows what's going to be best for us so we wish her the best of luck yeah from so, so she's like just taking a bit of, she's like just taking a bit of time off yeah. running and stuff mm -hmm. and she'll like maybe I, come back yeah. if she wants to maybe yeah. not pretty much i think yeah. that's what seems like she's going to figure out like i think it's just the situation where she's mentally and physically not where she should be and she wants to get to that place yeah. and she thinks she can get there yeah. without well that's like a, something that's i think very unique for running in particular just like I think because it's a very sometimes it can be a very like yeah, regimented, when you, when you, regimented sport yeah. and like um you know trying to maintain a healthy relationship with that and it's part of the philosophy that i use like um you know i've since college i've largely just kind of been training on my own um with doing stuff but um my kind of gauge that i always use is like when running feels more of an obligation versus something that like i want to do i know i need to like ch either change something in my routine or like try to take time off yeah um just to reset and like mentally and physically and i mean it's just a it's a tough beast to deal with yeah um it's like when being when you become athlete. so like focused on running and it becomes like and you and you put it above other uh things in your life it can like yeah that's when it goes bad and like i, I like for you tyson you're actually a great example of this because mm -hmm. after college you had some like amazing results mm -hmm. but also at the same time you like during that time you started to like to say delicate delicately you like started like enjoying yourself a lot more like doing things yeah that, like people would say are not good for your running but you started yes. running way better. I was like, fuck, this is pretty cool to see. Yeah, I, and that's part of the whole, I would say this is part of the butterfly process. Yeah, We're going to bring it back. Uh, We're just like butterfly process. expanding, letting my wings fly. Um, but yeah, I think it's, you know, and you can definitely get conditioned to this in college and like even in high school where, you know, your sport is so much of your identity and what you do and when that starts going bad then everything kind of crashes and falls in on itself and implodes and um and i think in college and just you know how it's structured you, you don't get a lot of opportunity to kind of explore and to do different things and you know kind of branch out that way um so you know once i was i mean once i was done with my five years of eligibility like i've I was always worried about that because, you know, for me, it's not like I'm going to go out and get a running pro. Like there really wasn't a next uh, visible step for me. Um, but, you know, I was really looking forward to the prospect of, you know, just being able to do like whatever I wanted to do. So like the few weeks after I got done, I went and I took two weeks and took a tr road trip by myself, was like sleeping on my car and went to Colorado and Utah, which like 
and now you know the whole traveling or just like going to national parks and hiking and stuff like that's yeah like that's such a fun thing to do and like not again something i really didn't get to do while i was in school but now is you know i would say something that i want to continue to do but just like those small things of you know being able to walk away from something that's like defined you for so long and um but also like again with you know i'm still training and like want to make another olympic trials um there's really nothing (laughs) further for me to try to do i like kind of know my ceiling but um yeah Yeah. but you just just like have just like just having fun with it yeah Yeah. you know what they say if you love something set it free gotta gotta let it go sometimes (laughs) but yeah shout out to alio thank you for being a great example yeah coming on podcast sometime if you'd like to if you'd like to or don't Um, yeah um, no pressure, no pressure. No pressure. But um, I thought that was like, there's a lot of things that I see on social media that really pisses me off. <laughs> and, and you love it. And I love it because <laughs> it, it, it hypes me up. This, this, this is another like five hours of content. <laughs> but seeing, <laughs> but seeing, her, seeing her do that, <laughs> and like there's also a numerous other mm-hmm. posts and people like raising money and, and doing amazing things. Like that's like makes me so proud of our community. Mm-hmm. Um, so That's so yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's hashtag very good for the sport. Yeah. Says, uh, Ellie's biggest achievement is not pissing Ellie off. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not that. Yeah. It's not. It's just like there's some stuff you see on social media. Like I just like, what are you? What are you posting that for? But then like, then bio. there's a lot of stuff out there. There's a lot of good yeah. stuff out there that um, and I, yeah. that I really and respect. I think, and it yeah. makes me happy to be a part of that community. And I think it's that. also like a very gendered issue as well. Yeah. Like I think like female athletes um, <clears throat> get a lot of flack for like making decisions like Alio, which is like, ah, eh, like, like you said, like, yeah, she's a girl and she's yeah. just like not tough, like mentally tough. Like it's, I would say it's way more mentally tough to like be able to make those decisions than to, you know, yeah, no, stick it's, it out sometimes. It's definitely like, not easy. Mm-hmm. Um, another big thing that happened over this past weekend was the Euro cross country championships. We had a couple of our teammates in yep. Carmela and Alicia racing. Carmela came eighth. Great job, and Alicia, was she 40 seconds? 40 seconds. 40 seconds. 75. So good job to her as well, representing yeah, Poland and Spain. Yeah. Uh, we, we like, oh man, far out. We haven't F1. even talked about F1. F1. <laughs> I mean, I was waiting for this moment to come up with Eurocross because literally, like, t- t- not to be an answer. They're on the same time. They're on the same time. What did we watch? We watched F1. Well, I had the, we had the Eurocross on our We phones. did have it, but like, we I had F1 on the TV, Eurocross on our I phones. was I was kind of like, one eye was kind of watching the Eurocross. Most of my attention was going to F1 because it's nuts finished. But, yeah. Um, I mean, your thoughts on the outcome? With F1? Rigged or not rigged? Uh, it's just weird because, like, <laughs> I mean, it is one of the greatest ever seasons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then he comes down to the last lap. Yeah. Like Lewis was so far ahead, and then you know he uh, Max Verstappen p- pitted three times. Was it three times in total? I think so. Yeah, and he had fresh tires. It came down to one lap, and he like he had Lewis in his like crosshairs. It's like he's gonna win. Like yeah. he's 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 gonna gonna get him. And I I think the one thing that I did have massive respect for, and as like being in sport, was seeing how Lewis like responded afterwards. Like he went up and shook everyone's hands. He yeah, took he his interview. Sure about he it, was honestly. very yeah. like he, he handled it very well because I could imagine like. The comeback that he like put in the mental and physical and his team too putting that effort in and then coming up short like that in a race like that having that lead it's just oh it's just so much for my head to and it's amazing the contrast with uh toto wolf man oh he <laughs> lost his shit he was <laughs> screaming i think they broke i think his headset broke i think he broke it but i mean it's just it's such a good it's i mean we, we talk about a lot of time on this pod um in and on runs are like it's very well done. Um, it's just the most entertaining. Like, most entertaining. Like, we spectacular. literally went to watch Premier League afterwards, and Geordie's like, nothing can compete with F1 now. Like, I'm still yeah. buzzing from it. Um, <laughs> they did they do such a good job of covering that sport. And, yeah. yeah, we're big fans of that. But the Euro, let's get to Eurocross. I think we should talk about Eurocross. <laughs> it looked like a pretty cool course. And yeah, I, a I lot of positive feedback like about Dublin hosting it. Like, people were like, that was an amazing event. They did a really good job hosting it. Um, Dude, also the social media for it was sick. Yeah, like they did like I, the music with the videos and stuff. I was like, whoa, you, you're making this like. It's like, oh, this is cool. It's a big deal for like the athletes, but now you're making it cool like socially. Yeah, and, uh, it looked like real cross country as well. Yeah, Ritz yeah. said it was the most amazing like cross country race he's ever been to. He said it was wow. better than any world cross or anything, just in terms of, like the experience. I guess that's awesome. That and is that, freaking. That's sweet. big. Like that's props from him because he's you know been to a few. He has been few to cross a, country, a couple uh, of those, but. 
uh, on the men's side. It's pretty. It's interesting that they do under twenties, under twenty threes, and opens, opens seniors rather than seniors. rather than like because like the way World Athletics does like under eighteens, under twenties, and seniors. Mm. But it is cool that they have all these different races going on. Um, Ollie's favorite, Mr. Charles Hicks. Hicks, under 23 champ. Under 23 champ. Good king, to see. What was it? They said like he's the king in Dublin or something. I don't Wait, know. did they say that? Yeah. I, I don't think know. That's why, I don't think that's why that was his Instagram caption. I don't think he's... I, I don't think, know why they'd say that. I mean, like, I, I can imagine him doing an interview afterwards saying super American and people are like, you got the wrong jersey on, man. But um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's an yeah, awesome yeah, result yeah. from him. I mean, like, he had an amazing NCAA season in the cross, so it's good to, like, have a result where he gets a good win. I think, Euros. yeah, I think he could have been top five in the seniors race. Yeah, he looks, he looks fantastic. And then um, Jakob just jogged it, got yeah, the win. Jakob was... The, I, when they, that video came viral of him, like, going like this, like, uh, the crouching behind. under... The, the guy um the turkish athlete i was like i thought he was mimicking him but then i found out it was the wind he was like trying to like get yeah, cover i from mean the i don't know if it's confirmed but it looked like he, i don't know I, I thought he was mimicking him but i think he was just I think more likely tactical. mimicking you ollie yeah he was running like <laughs> he oh, knows that my style is going to be the style that's going to be the he's, best he's trying to get in your head he's getting in my head rent free he always yeah. he already lives rent free in my head no but yeah. it, i mean he looked like he was just jogging yeah um and he, then the women they, norway uh, won the senior swept. men and yeah, women they swept. so okay. is this like a renaissance is this going to be like the new thing norway's going to be the new big distance country in europe something 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 something's brewing. in the water something's brewing mm, you know what they say <laughs> yeah but uh yeah you're i mean man can we like put like australia and new zealand in your across like that's just like it's yeah what was it oceana <laughs> it's such a great level do we have any, do we, is the oceania cross i don't, I don't think, think there is if there's oceana cross they have be track terrible. they have track oceana yeah. which is terrible which, which is, is new zealand and australia pretty much there's yeah no one else some islands some like, islands. some islands well that's what it <laughs> yeah, is yeah it is i know it's just the way you said it was funny some um, islands i mean that's the thing because i notice as well like like the north the nakak is it called nakak isn't as north competitive American, as i thought yeah, it would be is it pan am cross is not right people oh, people is. Is there, there is. yeah there is yeah, there yeah is. there's yeah. pan ams yeah um, hmm. but like people yeah That's people almost like opt out not to run it they're like it's yeah. just not really it's, it's just not run, very it doesn't have as much popularity as euro cross has but uh do you think that has more to deal with like i don't know who does it or like the structure of it versus like just kind of like the different interests via europe yeah, I think it's a combination of both where for the Europeans, like the timing's pretty nice. Start of December, like when you've had your big four ba basin. Mm -hmm. And then for those countries, for those athletes and the teams, you know, it's a really good level of competition for them to go and like compete for a win. And I don't think in Europe there's, I might be wrong in saying this, but I don't think there's ever like, like there's not a country that wins every year. It's not like World Cross where you know it's going to be between like Kenya, Ethiopia, and now like Uganda. Yeah. Like, I don't know who the... I don't even know who won Eurocross actually. Yeah, but it's. Yeah. Uh, I think it's like a really good level of competition for them. Shout out our guy uh, Johannes Mojo, my own alum. Yeah, he raced for Germany, good, right? For Germany, yeah. He yeah. Took Kate pretty Avery good run. raced too. Yeah, Kate Avery. So, <laughs> shout out Iona. It's a pretty, it's a pretty cool event, and and but, uh, it makes me. I was jealous. excited for World Cross. You got, yeah, World Cross, but it makes me jealous because like we don't. Yeah, like, we don't have that. Yeah, yeah, and World Cross is only every two years. Is is Eurocross every year? No, I don't know. actually know off the top of my head. I have no idea. Yeah, I have to check, check, check the. So I probably have like half the team back home. The fact that Carmel almost That's didn't right. get picked and then was just the best Spanish runner by I don't know. So Dathan, yeah. Dathan kind of puts That's it in that boat of like <laughs> we don't want to give you like the easy route from like he told me like so Carmel is our teammate and she didn't go back to Spain to race in the nationals slash trials. But she did a couple of races here like to show her fitness. But I think if you were like paying attention, she was pretty clearly good enough to get yeah. selected on the team. For the top six, right? I mean, yeah. Alicia was selected straight away. And then, I mean, obviously different country, but, um, you know, I, I can imagine for Kamala, it's like a bit annoying, but she got there and she proved herself. So that's pretty, yeah, pretty awesome. Good validation. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. some good confidence for her going forward. Yeah. I'm excited to see her race. Um, that's Gus. That's Gus. So yeah, we sleeping. put him outside and he gets... Yeah, he wait, gets how did he get out. outside? I let him outside because oh. he went to the door and I knew he'd make noise and then realized, oh, he's going to make noise to try and get back in. Because <laughs> he's like a little... Gus is, Gus that's is, what he does. Yeah. He just sits the door going... A little seal. He's like addicted to throwing rocks or chasing rocks, I guess. He wants you to throw rocks from all the time. And he won't come inside. Like you open the door and you expect him to want to come inside, but he wants you to come outside. Yeah. Which is annoying. He's cheeky like that. But the only other thing that I had written down, which was interesting, and this could be a really short one, is that 
they announced that the 2024 NCAA Indoors is at the is in Boston. Did you see that? It's at the New Balance track. Uh, they, they, I'm excited to see that new the one they just built. Yeah, 2024. Why? Yeah, no, I did why? see a stat from Jonathan Gold. This is like one of the first SWA championships in a major city since uh, Indy, Indianapolis. Indy, Indianapolis. Uh, yeah, 1999. So why, been a long it, it time. looks really cool. Why are they not racing on that track this year? Is it not? Is it cool. not finished yet? I think it, it may have just been finished or something like that. I think they're doing a lot of like high school races there <laughs> and stuff. Um, but heck, there's some competition now, and you know you got the. Track at Boston BU, is too good right? And then tracks. you got Harvard, which has got a good one. Reggie Lewis, like, yeah, the turns are tight, whatever, but, like, still a lot of history there. Um, and now New Balance um, has got their track. So it's going to be pretty crazy. Um, and I'm excited to see because that campus is cool now because they got the Celtics practice arena, the Bruins, and then the tracks. It's kind of right in the middle of them. Mm, and then, like, cool. the, the corporate offices and everything. I'm like, wow. yeah, it's pretty that's cool. Pretty, that's but, pretty uh, sick. Yeah. That's freaking sweet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's going to be exciting. I think it's going to hopefully – bring more people coming out to watch instead yeah. of ways, you know. I mean, it'd be awesome to get more support and a fan, you know. Yeah, well, the fact that it's back in Birmingham this year is such bullshit because no one in Birmingham knows what track it is. <laughs> it's well, not even in Birmingham. Birmingham's like, also like half developed. Like, I'm pretty the, sure last time you were there. It's like, like half an hour out of Birmingham yeah. in the middle nice of nowhere. Though. Good track. Nice track. <laughs> Good track, but like, to be to be fair, like it's just everything there looks like it's half finished. Yeah, why would you not hold it in a city where you actually get some real fans there? Yeah, yeah. like New York, even from New York, like New York, aren't yeah. they? Like, I mean, it would be, be, exactly. it'd be oh, so sick. Time. There's so yeah. many places you could hold great, and they just think, oh, we'll pick a you know a place where no one's yeah. gonna go. And, I don't know. You know I, I don't know how they base it because I don't know if it makes money. Money. Yeah, I mean, obviously <laughs> everything. I can answer that money. for money. <laughs> a lot of it's like space and capacity. So yeah. the cities they don't have like Birmingham just got a briefcase to give to the NCAA is like yeah, the NIA has been yeah. hurting you it's, it's freaking cheap case. yeah <laughs> Alabama I remember we, we were going out for dinner there and everything was so cheap it's, yeah. it's very there, cheap man. afterwards as well yeah so that's that uh, to Might round up to move there <laughs> Might round it up to round up this episode we don't really have Q&A except for something that a lot of people have been asking us is about toe spaces and we have a resident expert on toe spaces, George Keith Beamish. Hall. George Beamish. Hey, Keith, George Keith, Beamish. Keith Hall. Keith the Hall's question no, Hall. specifically is for Ollie. Ollie is a, is a well, part okay, of the package Padawan. came for me. Yes. Yeah. Because Greg Toes. Let, let me explain it. Okay, Greg, wait, Greg why toes. don't we have Ollie just explain why you should wear toe spaces? Yeah. Then? Yeah. Let's let's let's, let's, let's listen let's, to Ollie. Listen to me with my five minutes of experience. So what happened was mm. we got some correct. Thank you for correct toes for sending us some really nice toe spaces. Um, and so what is the purpose of the, toe spaces? Re the reason why is if your feet are like, if your toes are kind of curled up onto each other, it can really affect your, um, affect <laughs> 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 exactly. your running. So if it affects your running and it's hashtag not good for the sport, then toe, sp toe spaces and correct toes are hashtag good for the sport because they help you spread out your, and align your toes in the appropriate way, which really help your feet, um, Back to you, George. <laughs> <laughs> Back to you in the studio. <laughs> Incredible. Anything to add, George? That was that was pretty good summary. I mean, you can get into more of the details. You're you're much more intricate with these sort of things. <laughs> these sort of things. These sort of things. I mean, yeah. like they, they, I mean, pretty much they just help strengthen. I woke feet. up, my mm. feet were like curled up, and I just like felt bad, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna have to bite the bullet and listen to George and put on some toe spaces. And Ollie bought some tape for mouth his tape. mouth. Yeah. Does that come in? It hasn't arrived yet. No, though. it arrives in the his, to rough today. Mouth for his mouth. Yeah. Yeah. So like, like, at night. You guys haven't heard about this? We yes, I have heard about it. Yeah. yeah. No, it's the mouth. Yeah. But um, yeah, thank you for thank really you for the correct toes. Yourself. That was yeah. pretty awesome uh, to get those. And yeah. well, we've I mean, a lot of questions about the toe spaces. Yeah. So that's why we wear them is to correct your toes. Strengthen your feet, toes. Hopefully, get injured less. And then you can just like, I don't know, have strong toes. Yeah. What do you think, George? Yeah, that's what I think. George? I mean, like, jo joking, yeah. like, George. jokingly, yeah. pretty jokingly, Jordy could probably peel a banana with his toes. That's how strong his toes are. Toes like a monkey with those toes. Yeah. He could probably throw a bocce ball and make sure it lands right near that white ball. He's Speaking of basement toes. bocce, we haven't played in a long time. We haven't. We've been on Monopoly Deal. Play some we bocce. Yeah, yeah oh, we haven't I even mentioned bocce. this on the podcast. We play Monopoly Deal now. And it's really aggressive. It's to the so point where we, we made Snyder leave the table. Because <laughs> that was different. I felt bad about that. And then also, like, I'm pretty sure Jordy didn't win a game for a while. and was getting really aggravated. And Jordy, Jordy wanted, to, wanted to stop playing. And then he won. And, he and was then like, he actually, like, this, actually, this is actually pretty fun. I'll, I'll, I'll play again. <laughs> so that's what's been going on for us. But yeah. anything else, I, boys? Yeah. I want to shout out whoever's 
watching and like doing this whole thing that and, and hype you guys up for a second because like no. Loki, no, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, no, uh, like because it just a really cool. Like I was, I had brought it up, kind of like I picked up some some athletes that you know some two Canadian kids, right? Never you know met them before. They're coming to check out Iona and. Um, they were just like, you know, they said hashtag good for the sport. And I was like, <laughs> yes. Oh, damn, oh. right? And I was like, and then they, they're influencers. going. Influencers. But they're talking about this podcast and, and all this stuff, and they're saying all this, like, you know, they're Stop. talking about Stop the good, that. the bad. The, 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 <laughs> 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 he told them that. He told them that. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, it, it, like, it's sick. Like, it's like, you know, hearing, you know, hearing from them, but then also before you guys start it, what you guys want to bring to the table. It's like, yeah. yo, it's working. It's Dude, doing it. There's, it's there's two things that I, I've <laughs> contributed to so far is the hashtag good for the sport and also Keith Hall 1309. Yeah. Yeah. We need to find out who that bloke yeah. is because he knows way too much yeah. about me and Could it's terrifying. Detective out on that one. But thank you for that, Colin. Yeah. Dude, I guess how easy good job. recruiting is going to be for you now. Well, yeah, if we have that info, now you've been yeah. on an episode. Yeah. Because yeah. you like, wait, you're the guy from the podcast. I actually don't yeah. even know like how that works in terms of like, like the compliance office and like what I kind of can't say and be like, can I say like, oh yeah, like come to Iona, like it's sick. I can, like, it's like a <laughs> jam. I mean, it's, it's, it's an awesome <laughs> school. Morgan like, is wearing an Iona um, baseball. I don't, I don't know yeah. if this is compliance uh, okay, but you can if it's like if there's a kid that you really want in the future <coughs> and it's like kind of hard to get them, you can promise them. Uh, spot on the an episode of the podcast. Yeah, I'm like pretty sure that that sounds pretty illegal. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, All right, let's yeah. pretend I never said that then. Yeah. All right, but uh, <laughs> yeah, but just, yeah. With that said, thank you very much, guys. Thank for you coming for coming. On. Yeah. Cheers, boys. Thanks for coming, and visiting. Cheers, yeah, yeah, thanks for having us. Thank you, everyone, for listening to another episode. I think we actually did pretty well despite the long run. I think we were pretty energetic, but we're gonna go crash now. Gonna go watch. You guys want to watch an episode of the Beatles? Can yes. you wait for me? Oh, yeah, you got a meeting. Uh, well, we I also need back. to catch up on episode one. So. True, true, true. But, uh, yeah, thank you the for watching, everyone. See you guys next time. Right.